Hi, and welcome to Anime with Annie. In this video today, I'll be talking about Full Metal Panic and what shocked me about the series. But before we get into it, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to never miss any updates from us. That said, let's have a closer look. Remember how in chemistry you had to combine the different volatile compounds in the right amounts, else everything would burn up? Full Metal Panic is a risky experiment that combines mech fights with romance and serious military-style combat with high school humor. That is a risky blend of seriousness and humor. If it is either too serious or too funny, viewers will lose interest in the program. Numerous animes have attempted to blend genres with unsatisfactory results. On the other hand, Full Metal Panic manages to keep a perfect balance between the serious and the ridiculous, creating a truly distinctive anime series. The world depicted in Full Metal Panic is not too far from our own. However, there is black technology, in a particular group of people known as the Whispers, who have improved cognitive powers. Large humanoid mecha units known as armed slaves could be mass-produced thanks to this black technology, and they eventually found their way into the hands of terrorists. A covert organization known as Mithro was established to resist this growing threat and safeguard the Whispered from being kidnapped and used by terrorists. Sosuke Sagara, a mithril operative who is only 17 but is already a battle-tested soldier, is tasked with guarding Kaname Shidori, a recently found whisperer. Sosuke enrolls covertly as a student in Kaname's high school with the help of his colleague, the witty Kurz Weber, and team manager, Melissa Mao. As Suzuki attempts to protect Kaname in the only manner he knows how, violently, decisively like a well-trained soldier, even using some standard battlefield tactics typically employed to take down armed assailants. Her seemingly regular life comes crumbling down. To Kanem's dismay, humor breaks out as Suzuki, who has only known a life of battle from infancy, strives to fit into regular society and complete his job. But just as it looks like the plot is turning into a normal romantic comedy, Kanem's location has been uncovered and a mystery terrorist group is on the hunt for her using any means necessary. The writing of Full Metal Panic stands out as being noticeably more mature than those of its peers because it was adapted from a series of novels rather than a manga geared toward children or teenagers. As the series progresses, each character receives adequate growth and is completely realized. Even the supporting cast members who are typically just one-dimensional stock tropes end up being fairly likable. The dynamic chemistry between the oppressed yet tenacious Suzuki and the impulsive Kaname is essential to the plot. Even though Suzuki initially only sees Kaname as a mission goal, and Kaname initially views Suzuki as Sergeant Psycho, the two become closer as they get to know one another. There is undoubtedly a romance theme, but it is handled tastefully and without any cliched mush. The way the dialogue is written gives the entire plot a better sense of realism. Excellent performances match the top-notch screenplay, which is witty and charming. The English voice acting provided by ADV flicks is noteworthy. You can be confident that the superior English dub from ADV movies is ton-for-ton ton accurate with the Japanese track. Some roles might even sound more natural when spoken in English, such as Chris Patton's portrayal of Suzuki Sagara, who frequently uses military jargon and speaks with a stern drill sergeant-like demeanor. There is also a Chinese dub track that has been released in Asian nations, although it suffers from grave role miscasting and a general lack of actor excitement. Overall, the USA English recording and the Japanese language track both sound authentic and are equally engaging. Full Metal Panic is one of the more attractive 2002 productions, yet despite being so new, it hasn't held up so well. Full Metal Panic starts off with gorgeous art detail and good frame rate animation by Gonzo Studios, but as the series goes on, the quality degrades. Only a submarine and a few aircraft use badly rendered CGI, which is luckily kept to a minimum. However, the show's second half was a good amount of overt cost cutting, making it appears that the production went over budget midway through. The animation quality in the first and final episodes is noticeably different. This film is a letdown from the same animation studio as Samurai 7 and Afro Samurai. Full Metal Panic is a peculiar series that despite its animation shortcomings, manages to feel as amazing as some of the greatest Hollywood movies of all time. This makes it simple for viewers who have never seen anime to understand, and it makes a wonderful series for newbies to enter the anime community. Full Metal Panic might end up being a contemporary classic that is discussed for years to come, considering that there are two anime sequels, a few manga spin-offs, and a loyal fan base despite its youth. And that concludes my reason for what shocked me by seeing Full Metal Panic. If you enjoyed it, please be sure to like and subscribe to my channel, Anime with Annie, for more such exciting anime content and reviews. And please leave comments about what you thought of today's video. 
And remember, have an Annie amazing day.